and three, especially once he has evolutionary leap. We we'll take a look at the board here, and Majors is the one with things on the board. He's got a Gideon that just attacked. That's on three counters. Looks like a couple Thopters there from Hangerback Walker. A Soldier token from Gideon, along with a Warden of the First Year that's looking to go to the top rope, and then Nissa that's flipped. Logan, well, he's going to play a Nissa here. Looks like he's in some trouble. His Nissa flipped. That means he had to let the other one go. I think his hand is, is just Nissa's. A land in... Another, Another Nissa. Nissa. Yeah. That's not going to help him with what he's staring down right now. He just has to pass the turn back. Michael's going to pump up the Warden. Looks like he's going to do it again. And he'll untap here. And he might be walking into a beatdown, one of your favorite things. I prefer it for a match-ending beatdown. Oh. But I'll take this one, too. Not just a game-ending beatdown. Nissa's going to reveal Den Protector. Gideon's moving up. It's a 5-5, ready to attack. Looks like everybody's coming into the red zone. And if it's lethal, maybe it looks like Logan has a shambling vent down there that can do a little bit of chump blocking. But only a little, and, and Majors is threatening to go ultimate here with Warden. Yep, Logan going to fire up the shambling vent. Pretty awesome to have Creature Lands back in the format. Yes. I always like these cards. Here's Shamoka's command. Not going to let that happen. And Logan's already conceding the game. So Michael Major's going to win game number one here over Logan Mize. Green White Megamorph up a game here over Obs on Control, which means now we get to take a look at these sideboards. And we will start with Logan, which you have in front of you. Four copies of a Russian Cleric and Utter End, two copies of Painful Truths, two copies of Green Warden of Marasa, three Transgress the Mind, two Hidden Dragon Slayer, and a copy of Duress. I like the Utter End in this matchup. I, I think that even though Major's deck is a little bit on the aggressive side, the matchup is slow enough for cards like Painful Truths and Green Warden of Marasa to be fine cards for Logan to bring in. Green Warden, not even a card I, was, I even thought about at this point because it's been a little while since we've really kind of talked about that card and that effect. Dead Protector is the natural go-to, but mm -hmm. if, if this game is any indication, we're going to play a longer game here, so that card can really have a huge effect. I think it's very easy to be taken uh, a little off-balance by Green-White Megamorph and just assume that you just want sweepers and removal spells, and you do want some of that, but you need to be able to punch them later in the game, too, because they can play a late game very effectively. So uh, these cards that are a little bit on the slower side, they look like they're maybe more geared for control matchups. I think Logan can get some really good mileage out of them here. Uh, for Michael, he's got two Silk Wraps, three Russian Clerics, two Whispered Elementals, three Evolutionary Leaps, a Mastery of the Unseen, a Radiant Purge, a Valor Stance, and then two Cops of Tragic Arrogance. I think probably the same deal that we saw before here in this kind of matchup with Whispered Elemental, uh, Evolutionary Leap, Mastery of the Unseen all appearing. I think the one copy of Valor Stance is acceptable as well. His deck is geared to grind. Yes. In a big, big way. And he's already up a game here, so he's going to look to try to grind down Obzon Control again. And while these two players do shuffle up, we will take a look at the IQ circuit, something that has certainly helped Logan Mize keep his head above water here to try to qualify for the Player Championship one more time. Absolutely. You can bring these Invitational qualifiers to your local store, all sorts of tiers to them. For those of you trying to qualify for the Invitational, naturally they come with that, along with playmats, top eight pins, Invitational winner tokens, and SEG premium vouchers. Whether or not you're looking for more local play at your store, to qualify for the Invitational or even to try to qualify for the Players' Championship, IQs are the best way to do it. Logan Mize, number 12 on our Season 4 leaderboard. As I did mention, he did qualify for our Players' Championship last year. Looking to make his way back there this year, which is part of the reason he's made the trip up in Florida. Yeah, currently in 12th place in our standings and a player where if things ended today, I believe he would be on the outside looking in, but plenty of time here in Season 4. Yeah, we can't forget, you know, it, it, he's... His conversion rate is so good when it comes to these events. You know, he's got six Open Series top eights in Chicago earlier this year. He lost the finals uh, when he was playing Heroic to Green Red Devotion. Hasn't gotten the trophy, but, I mean, he's been close multiple different times. Yeah, and, and like you said, you know, he doesn't do a whole lot of traveling, although that changed towards the back end of Season 4 last year. I think it's going to be changing this year as well. But uh, his top eight conversion rate's very, very good. I mean, you can bank on seeing him in Atlanta next weekend. Absolutely. That's for sure. Don't know if he's going to be playing the same deck, of course, but you can certainly bank on seeing him play there. And, you know, we saw with him and Steven Mann last year, they traveled basically everywhere at the end of Season 4, and I expect to see the same behavior. I would expect so as well, especially for Logan here, who is on, on the cusp of the Players' Championship. Outside looking in, 
But like I said, plenty of magic left to be played and uh, plenty of opportunities here for Logan to make up that gap. Not a lot of time left in this particular match, however. We're underneath 20 minutes and game one did just end, so these players will have to pick up the pace a little bit here, especially Mize, if he does want to tie things up. But Majors' deck, thus far through our five rounds, and this isn't to take away anything from any of the decks we've seen, this is the one that's impressed me the most. Yeah, it, it looked very good in the match we, we saw him play earlier beating an Esper control guy in games that went long. They were not short games. And I think that if you're expecting a lot of four and five color mid-range strategies, this green white Mega warp deck can handle a lot of opposing threats with Hidden Dragon Slayer and so forth and uh, can play a versatile game and the sideboard's great. Major's gonna reveal his hand. I believe seven lands, so he'll take a mulligan. Looks like Mize is gonna keep his seven. One of the things that people have been talking about, you know, is Obzon still good at Lost Courser, Lost Elspeth? Lost carry added if you were kind of on that build. Lost a lot of great options. Still a lot of good cards available, of course. You get Gideon as a new card. Siege Rhino, of course, is fantastic. But what's the best way to try to build this thing? I think losing Corsair is an enormous blow. Plenty of the Obzon cards, Siege Rhino and Obzon Charm, they're still good enough to be the foundation for a deck. But uh, I think this is going to be severely powered down compared to last year's build. It's interesting because I think we kind of forget maybe undersell just how powerful Corsair is. It, it, it's something that's almost got lost in the shuffle. You never remember the games where it dominated, but there was plenty of games where that was the case. It's not this big, splashy effect. When, when someone plays a Siege Rhino, oof, you, know, you feel like you got punched in the gut. When someone plays a Corsair, it's like, yeah, whatever, just put your land off the top on the yeah. battlefield. I don't care. Gain your life, whatever. But at the end of the day, that card was winning game after game after game. I think the combination of Temples and Corsairs were so powerful for hitting land drops and finding more action later on in the game. And the deck has to fight much more fair now. Dress took care of Gideon. Majors, as you can see, without any green mana at this point. But you do get a draw step every turn. It's one of the great things about Magic. And now he's got green mana. See, that was easy. There's yeah. a windswept heap. Michael going to search up Basic Forest. Perhaps he'll deploy that evolutionary leap here in just a moment. And there is the leap. Might as well sacrifice his Windswept Teeth. He'll fall to 19. Tie game. We'll see what Landy wants to search up. To turn three here for Logan. There's a Heath. We're heading back to Majors, who's drawn his own Heath. It's a very windswept Heath-centric match right now. Yes. That's really the only thing that's going on. Logan's going to sacrifice his windswept Heath. Majors windswept Heath, a little bit easier to resolve, though. It's got two <laughs> basics, so it's only Kennedy Bissa. For, for Mize, it's, does he get a duel? Does he get a basic? A little bit tougher. Right, he's going to get a Plains. In a moment here, I'm sure Michael will sacrifice his Heath, and Logan just drew a Windswept Heath. What's happening? Michael going to sacrifice his Heath to get a Canopy Vista. And Logan will play a Windswept Heath. I can do this all day. Who likes to shuffle? <laughs> Majors did not draw a Windswept Heath. Drew a Nyssa. Yeah. Also picks up the deck and looks through it. It does. So that's what he's going to do. Search for a basic forest while Logan sacrifices his windswept teeth and gets a forest. Now both players searching a forest. And now this is where the grind really starts on Major's side here. Evolutionary leap alongside value creatures to invalidate spot removal spells and sweepers. We saw this recipe work fantastic for Michael earlier in the tournament. Mm -hmm. Sansep Citadel, the draw here for Mize. And now Mize's spot removal spells are very ineffective. Oh, they stink. Like the ruinous path in hand? Boo. Yep, boo to that. Here comes Nyssa. A different fetch land. Wooded foothills into the graveyard. There's a basic forest. 
see what's next here for Michael. Might be Den Protector time. Some interest in getting that Gideon back. Well, Den Protector does jam up his resources a little bit this turn, as if Logan plays a sweeper, he has to choose between leaping twice or using Den Protector. Sure. So it's not totally free for him to cast it, even though it's on curve, but if he had nothing else to do with his mana, probably just can't give up his whole turn waiting for a better spot. There's Llanowar Waste. Let's see what this is. It's a language. This is the situation you just mentioned. Yep. I think, I think he's probably going to leap twice, but okay, he wants Gideon. I think he can, well, he can Gideon make a token with, with, that. with Evolutionary Leap. That's a combo, too. You know what that is? Good deck build. Absolutely. How you draw it up? There's Gideon. Going to make a Knight Ally. Here's Ruinous Path. Oh, a little Waken. Got ourselves a forest here. That'll be a 4-4. Four, four. Gideon down. I think Michael has Valor Stance in his hand, but no need to cast no. that just yet. He can wait. Warden of the first tree, the draw. I like, I like Stone Raiding. I won't even say as much as the next guy. More than the next guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Should have awakened. <laughs> yeah. It's not quite Wasteland, but... Way to use the new mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> Just a huge mistake there yeah. by Logan. Oh, you want to awaken again? You got it. All right. I'll blow that up, too. Then protect her back my Valor stance. <laughs> Play a little land destruction deck. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come on, Michael. You're going to sacrifice... Den Protector. How's Hanger Back Walker okay? Pretty good. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, evolutionary Leap makes spot removal look like a joke. Yeah, it's, it's very, very bad. Valor stays <laughs> to draw. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes the attack. It's probably not as good as just Hanger Backing for a bunch this turn. Well, I, I think he's like, yeah, I don't know if he could help himself. There's Hanger Back. It doesn't even, I mean... You don't even care that much about Ugin with the board that you have if you're on Michael's side, so you, you know, you can't do it, but you should have done it. Yeah. <laughs> you can save it for later. It's still available the next turn. Yep. How about that? Logan not attacking and not blocking with the Awakened Lands and just getting Stone Rain would really make my day. Ah, Hanger Rack Walker's going to be sacrificed to the Leap. Three Combo. Thopters. Take a look. Hidden Dragon Slayer. That's going to kill that land, by the by. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> He's not even done with all the stone rains. Logan, what are you doing to yourself? <laughs> Flooded strand. <laughs> Go search of the land here. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is making my day. It's a tough, tough game to watch. Uh, if you're rooting for Logan Wise, it's getting ugly out here. Majors, gonna morph, unmegamorph, <laughs> kill <Yes>. that land. Ah, <laughs> oh, beautiful. Here's a pretty healthy attack. And plenty of creatures to sacrifice evolutionary leap. Look, I'm just gonna say through 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 five rounds, I know what the best deck in this tournament is. So far. Through five rounds. Definitely it's definitely better than anything we've watched. It's for not, sure. It's not even close. For it's sure. been the best deck through five rounds. Michael Majors is five and oh with uh, one heck of a deck. Oh. Uh, oh, uh, the the blowing up the awakened lands there is so that is the sweetest plum. I love it. 